It looks pretty cool and all, but like, do I really need that? Is it even better than the iPhone? I mean, come on, this, this is the best smartphone, right? I don't even like Android. And what about AirDrop, AirPlay, HomeKit, FaceTime? And what about the green bubble? And you know what? If I don't like it, then I just return it. It's not a big deal. At least I can say I tried. But what if I do like it? Guess there's only one way to find out. Titanium. I feel like this is going to be the new trend this year and I'm all for it. In my hand, the S24 Ultra does overall feel different compared to my 15 Pro Max. Mainly it's the rounded off side rails paired with the flat top and bottom, but the flat bottom does allow the S Pen to sit flush with the phone and I really like that as it kind of just stays out of the way. With that, the titanium matte rails and borders meet the display which goes from corner to corner and is now completely flat. It doesn't round off or bleed over like the S23 or 22 Ultra did and since I never used those phones long enough to tell, I can't say this is a good or bad thing. But the display still extends all the way to the edges so it's still got that bezel -less look and the bezel is even all the way around which is a nice touch. This is also my first time having a hole punch for a selfie cam and I like it. It's fresh and new but it's not as good as the dynamic island over on the iPhone, at least in my opinion. Now the screen looks amazing. I was actually quite shocked because I feel like Samsung is kind of known for having a very oversaturated look and I just don't find that here. The screen itself is a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display. It's QHD which you can choose from in the settings and it has a native 120 hertz refresh rate. It's basically pretty standard but something that is brand new is its peak brightness which now hits 2600 nits and long story short it's bright. Like take this outside on a sunny day and you'll have no problem seeing what's on your screen but even with just a few moments of using this screen it's easily one of the best I've ever looked at. I think it actually might even be better than the iPhone. The cameras. They seem to sit and look the same from previous models as in the exact same position and layout but they're slightly different internally. There's still the 200 megapixel main camera which that's a lot of megapixels and then also the same 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. But now the telephoto lenses are completely different and it's kind of funny to see and I think you probably already know why. So we get the same 10 megapixel 3x telephoto lens but it's now paired with a brand new 50 megapixel 5x telephoto lens. Basically they took that 10 megapixel crazy 10x telephoto lens and just literally got rid of it which is undoubtedly taken and inspired from the iPhone 15 Pro Max which sort of introduced the 5x zoom lens. I think this is a prime example of when Apple waits a little longer to implement something but then actually does it better. But what I will say is that I am loving that it's a 50 megapixel sensor on the 5x telephoto because it should result in some pretty crispy photos on the S24 Ultra. Now I should mention this doesn't mean that the 10x zoom has completely disappeared, it just now uses that 50 megapixel sensor to crop in, which I'm pretty sure still results in a 10 megapixel photo. Something very interesting was that Samsung now claims that the S24 Ultra now has a native in-app camera experience across Instagram and Snapchat. And this is a huge deal because you can always tell when someone posted a photo or shared a photo on an Android. I'm, I'm honestly not too sure how, but I know you know what I mean. The S24 Ultra is being powered by the new Snapchat Dragon 8 Gen 3 chip, which is slightly modified for Galaxy. I really don't know too much about the chip, but everything feels fast, snappy, and smooth, and this chip also helps deliver the 5G connectivity, Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.3, some pretty good speakers, controlling the thermals, and of course, the battery life. Hardware aside, I think it's the software that is the most important, and there's a lot to unpack here as someone who's never used Android before, but in terms of the S24 Ultra specifically, you could sum it up all into one word, or really just two letters, and that's AI. It all starts with One UI 6.1 based off of Android 14, and now packing Galaxy AI. Starting with circle to search with the help of Google, One UI now has the ability to literally circle an object and search it through the web. If you hold down the gesture bar, you can now tap and circle an item on your screen, and it'll just deliver some Google results right to you. This is the first time I've ever experienced something like this, and if there's one thing I think Apple should steal, it should be this. 
Like imagine being able to do this on an iPad with an Apple Pencil, that would just be awesome. Another big one is when it comes to photos, you can basically do almost anything and everything when it comes to manipulating and editing your photos with AI. It works a lot like the Google Pixel implementation, so you can just do things like mask out objects or people out, you can move objects around within the photo, and you can fill in areas using generative fill. You can also create slow motion video out of any video as it will add frames to your footage to create that slow motion effect. And just basic simple edits all just get a big boost and an upgrade thanks to that Galaxy AI. There are a ton of other AI features like the chat assist where you can change the tone, translate, or spell check text messages before sending them. The live translate feature translates calls into 13 different languages in real time. Note assist can summarize, translate, and format files within the Samsung Notes app. And then also transcript assist which can summarize and improve your voice notes which is something that I personally do a ton so this is definitely going to be one of my favorite features. There is a ton more that I'm missing but I'm honestly still just trying to figure out Android as a whole which is a lot like there is so much customization that I don't even know where to begin which is where I'm gonna leave things for this video because there is so much to learn and figure out and customize and just so much to do and as someone who's never used Android before there's a lot to learn like there's a lot that I still need to figure out just about Android before I even get into knowing more about this Samsung in particular but yeah I I don't know I don't know if this is gonna make me switch completely to Android I think this is definitely keep my eyes open to what's available on the market and stuff. Like I would love to try like maybe like a Pixel or a Huawei or a nothing phone, just really expand out of the walled garden of the Apple ecosystem. Cause there clearly is a lot of good things, not perfect, but there's a lot of good things going for Android. And especially with the S24 Ultra, this is a solid phone. It's got everything you could expect in a flagship and I'm happy with it. That being said, iPhone 15 Pro Max, it's going in the drawer at my desk. SIM card is going in here, not gonna touch the iPhone. Gonna spend at least a week, maybe two, just strictly using this phone, and then I'm gonna get back to you guys, maybe do like a day in the life or something, and just, you know, overall, give you a more in-depth review of the S24 Ultra. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video, and if you have any tips or tricks on switching from iOS to Android, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. And also let me know if you guys want to see any other tech on this channel, whether it be like Windows, PC, gaming stuff, camera gear, whatever it is, let me know because I definitely am interested in just exploring more tech and not getting so sucked into the walled garden of the Apple ecosystem. But yeah, let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.